Welcome into the MP Nation podcast. I'm your host, Mark Schlereth, along with Marcus Bouchesha, right? Bouchesha. That's how they say it? Yeah. Now, I, I was reading about you, and they said that means, uh, what, like big cheeks, chubby cheeks? Yeah, you don't... yeah, just cheeks, actually. Just cheeks? Yeah. Okay, so how do you get the nickname Cheeks, man? Because I know you didn't nickname yourself Cheeks. No, no. Uh, back in the day, my, my master at the time, he gave me the, the nickname because I was kind of like chubby kid, you know? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And my father told told the the guys, all the guys that I used to hate the nickname. So in Brazil, <laughs> if you say that you don't like something, that you're gonna stick. It, it, but listen, my nickname is Stink. Stink. So yeah. So when you get a nickname like Bouchesha for cheeks, or you get a nickname like Stink, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just gonna stick. You just have to embrace it, right? If you fight with somebody for the first time, that's it, right? Right. If somebody call you there and you fight with the guy. It's over. It's, it's over. Okay, so now, uh, my understanding is that you are a gigantic deal when it comes to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, a black belt in that craft, in that art form. Take me through, take me through, how do you get to that point? And what does that mean, a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Yeah, to be a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that is a lot of, like, Sports, you know, it's really hard. It's not some uh, easy art to get the, the black belt. Uh huh. And it's been like I started when I was 12 years old, and I got the black belt when I was 20. So what was that? Eight years to get the black belt. And as black belt, I I won eight world titles. You know, so that's something like really hard to do in the sport. Uh, I think I, I am the second one the history of with more titles mm-hmm. so that's why it's like it's, it's been a big deal you know? right so you said eight years and this intrigues me because like where do you start off I don't know anything about belts other than I need one to hold up my pants because I've got the legs of a 180 pound man so I know I need a belt but how do you go like what are the different levels and what like, how do you go from one level to the next level and you progress all the way to the black belt? Yeah, because in Jiu-Jitsu, you have, like, of, like for the adults, it's five belts. You okay. start as white belt, beginner, so first okay, day. That's where, first day, yeah. I'm a white belt right yeah, now, exactly. people. That's where I'm at right now, and I'm okay with that because you got to start somewhere. The only place you start on top is when you're digging a hole. So white belt is where I'm starting today. Officially, I'm a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, then what's the next belt? The next belt is the blue belt. When you start like, to have a little bit, you know, you know kind of what to do. You kind of understand already what is the sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, then after the blue belt, when you get advanced, you go to the purple belt, you know, that's, mm-hmm. you kind of like know what you're doing already, so you're more experienced. Then you get the brown belt. That's when uh, brown and black, are the last ones and when you allow it to do like higher techniques you know like knee bars uh, different foot locks because in the lower belt the guys can't can't defend don't know how to defend so can get hurt so that's why competition they don't they don't allow it you know okay. it's kind of like knee bars to protect the athlete so when you get the brown so you kind of like the same as the black you know you can go out for all the techniques and black belt you know, that's the top of the sport, but that's actually just the beginning, you know? so Right. that's when the fun starts. Okay, so in America, um, and it's one of the gripes I have about this country, is that we like to give out uh, certificates of participation for everything, you know? I mean, the first time you take a dump by yourself, you get a big present for it, right? You know, it's like, oh my God, let's put a flag in it. So, I mean, this is how America works right now. And then, you know, we go to graduation parties for our kids that are leaving kindergarten. You know, you're like, really, we're graduating from kindergarten and we're gonna throw a big party. So what kind of party or what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, presentation do you get as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy when you go from belt to belt? Like when you went from brown belt to black belt, did they throw a party for you? No, actually a really common thing, uh... When you get a belt, they make they make like a gauntlet, you know. Uh huh. Everybody like make the the gauntlet. Everybody take the belt off, and you gotta walk through the gauntlet, and everybody hits you like slaps <laughs> you. Yeah. Right. 
that's kind of like the body. Does it welt? Does it like welt you up? Is it? Does it hurt? Does it sting? Or yeah, it depends on your friends. You know? <laughs> if you have good friends, it's gonna hurt really more. Some guys just yeah, congratulate you, but of course you always have friends in the gym because you're there. You see the guys more than your family because you play every day. You know, drink. So some guys okay. make sure that you get some. Right, you're uh, gonna get some welts on your yeah, back, right? Uh, that's awesome. That's what friends are for, right? Exactly. The friends are for to keep us humble, yeah. and that's a humbling experience. Okay, and to put you down, you right? Know, I, so you think I'm not looking good? Yeah, you're sure you're not looking good, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what makes guys guys, right? You know that we love each other if we're flipping each other grief, right? That's yeah. when you know we're real friends. Exactly. Like when we're being mean to, yeah, like I have this. I, I heard this a long time ago, and I'm going to try to figure it out. The main difference between men and women, I hope I'm doing this justice, um, men sit around and crush each other all the time, verbally assault each other, and it shows you you know, how much, and, and they don't mean any of it. This is the difference between men and women. Yeah. They verbally assault each other, they don't mean any of it. Women get together and they throw compliments at each other and they don't mean any of it. That's the main difference between men and women. That's what I've heard about the two. Oh, I'm, girl, you're looking good. But right, she, yeah, like, but then you go to the bathroom uh, together and you go, oh, can you believe what she's wearing? <laughs> oh, my goodness, right? So that's kind of where we are. How does, like, what was the impetus for you? What was uh, the catalytic event that, that made you go, man, I've seen that. I love what they're doing. I want to get in the gym. I want to study jujitsu. Well, how, did, how did your career come about? Actually, um, when I was 12, 12 years old, mm -hmm. I have a sister, you know, she's three years older than me. She was 15 at the time, okay. like a teenager, starting like, you know, uh, going out, this kind of stuff. Right. And she started jujitsu. You know, okay. Jiu-Jitsu, for, for those who don't know, look, like my father who used to say, wow, what is that? Looks, looks like crabby, you know, fighting right. on the ground. So I don't like, but teenagers, if you say, some, if you say no to them, they're going to do it right. the same way, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of, instead of my, my father, like, not allowing her to do it, he started going with her to the gym. Know, to watch her but just to yeah. be like to be just, a parent yeah, yeah. To, to watch because just guys she was the only like she was the only woman at the gym and one more uh, yeah, long story short my my sister she quit but before she quit my both of them convinced me to go with them mm -hmm. but I used to go just because my father used to buy me like coke and chocolate cake you know? uh -huh like between after the classes and she quit and me and my father kept doing and we got the black belt together you know after like so years. so i'm reading between the lines here what really happened is your 15 year old sister was whipping your 12 year old ass and you decided you needed to go get some jujitsu training to protect yourself against your yeah. sister is yeah, that what really yeah, happened yeah i i just skipped that part you know <laughs> but it's really true you know was really bad for me imagining like a girl beat me up <laughs> there's no win in that competition by the way if you get on and and I, i'm gonna call it I, you know in the old wrestling I, I was a high school wrestler uh -huh. and i love wrestling um and it's the hardest sport i've ever been involved in but we say you know you when you roll i mean yeah. like when you fight you know, you roll right yeah. So there's no, I mean, when you get in a role with a gal, even if it's your sister, there's no winning that competition. Because even if you crush her, you just beat a girl. But if she beats you, I mean, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's how I felt, you know, for a long time. And she used to beat me at home and in the gym. So mm -hmm. it was really, like, frustrating. You know? Right. You know what I mean? But then, you know what, it drove you to world championships. And, yeah. I mean, the cover of magazines. Now, I don't know how recognizable you are in this country when you're traveling around, but I would imagine in your country, you're like a rock star. Are you like a, you walk into the airport in Brazil, are you a rock star? <laughs> Not really, but like a lot of people, you know, Jiu-Jitsu is like, it's a small world, mm -hmm. but people who does kind of like follow, you know, so right. everybody kind of like does know each other, you know, I mean, I mean competition, you know, for the competitors. Right. Uh, especially because this is the most important tournament so kind of everybody even if you don't follow they just who won you know that's the question so they right see my picture and sometimes they recognize me 
So this is a this is Gracie magazine, and I think that name when you hear the name Gracie, you think of jujitsu. I mean, at least I do because it's the first time I was introduced to it was back in the day when I was playing, and they said, "Hey, we got to watch this. You know, we got to watch these fights, these pay per view things." And the Gracie family was ginormous yes. in that sport. So how influential has that family been on you and the sport in general? I think everybody who does jiu-jitsu nowadays this is because of that, you know. So all my friends, like you said, you know, uh, they watched the fights just like you and saw Hoisey Grace killing everybody. Mm -hmm. And like, oh my God, I want to learn that, I want to do that, you know. All my my friends, the older friends, they started because of the same thing. And I didn't directly, right? But at the end of the day, the guys who taught me was because of that. You know? Right. So it was like a big influence for sure. What did you think about this last, um, this this last rumble they had, the 200, uh, um, and with Brock Lesnar coming back to the to the ring. What what do you I mean did you do you watch the fights? Do you watch UFC two hundred? Did you watch Brock Lesnar fighting that? Yeah, actually I didn't I, I didn't watch the whole event because it's like too long and I was competing on the same day. Okay. Last Saturday. And I but I watched the whole fight. Mm -hmm. I got surprised because he fought really good, you know, he was like without fighting for a long time because right. he got sick, right? Mm -hmm. He had this like problem. And he fought three rounds with Mark Hunt, like really tough guy. If you get one punch, he's done. And he did good, so I'm really surprised, you know. He, but I always was like a big fan of Brock Lesnar, you know. I like the way that he goes, like crazy, you know. Yeah, he, he is. You know, it was really interesting because he did play uh, professional football. He went to training camp once, and he was actually made to the final cut. He was actually pretty good. Like I watched him on film, and I was like. Wow, that dude, you know, from an NCAA champion wrestler to a, you know, a champion in MMA and also playing professional football, it was, he's a pretty impressive athlete. Would you, yeah. would you like to, to, you know, get in the ring with him and, and go toe to toe? Would that, would that be something you would aspire to? Not really, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not really. For what it's worth, not me, me neither. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Come on. Right. No, but I mean, I, I like you know the way that the way that he goes. He wants to kill you know like so. I think it's really interesting. Okay, biggest difference between being here in America and being in Brazil. Like what's like what's the biggest um, the biggest challenge for you or the or the biggest difference that that you look at and go wow that's completely different than how we do things where I'm from. Ah. Uh. It's hard to say just one thing, you know. Right. Like, it's really different, the culture, the people. Of course, you know, I'm Brazilian, so always going to miss, like, some things at home. But here, the things, like, works, you know. Everything works. Uh, the law, the, the, like, what's the word? Everybody's polite. Kind of, like, everybody's doing, like, things right. And... I think was the main reason because I left Brazil was because here the sport they recognize the sport, you know, the the, mm -hmm. the athletes in Brazil. If you say oh, I'm a fighter, all right, but what do you do? Like, right. I'm a fighter. No, but what do you work? What do your work? All you make right. money. Like, come on. It's like that happens yeah. all the time. Right. Know? So here, if you say I'm a fighter, like people, okay, that's your profession. It's your, your profession. profession. Right. You know, that's your profession. So it's kind of like that, you know what I mean? So in Brazil, if you want to like live off the sport, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible. So how, how, you're an eight-time world champion? Is that what I read? Or? As, as black belt. As yeah. a black belt, eight-time world champion. What, like, it's a different sport for me. So yeah. what, does that, what does that mean? D explain that to me. Like, it's like, example, the biggest one of the history mm -hmm. is Roger Gracie. He has 10 world titles. Okay. So, me and another guy, we have eight. So, we kind of like right there. But it, Roger kind of retired, so he doesn't compete in worse Jiu Jitsu tournaments anymore. Uh, and 
that's like a so okay so it's it's a major tournament like the, the the world title or you're just once you're a world champion you just keep defending it from tournament to tournament is that how that works you no know, it's like every year you know it's a tournament okay uh, you gotta qualify to uh -huh. compete or you must be like world champion before mm -hmm. to have your spot and every year it's the same thing it's a tournament doesn't matter who is the champion you know right in their bracket and you fight to, and you to, fight until there's one guy standing and that guy's the world champion at the end yeah. of that tournament. What, what is the tournament that, that determines the world champion? What do you mean? Is there, is there, is it one tournament in particular that you all go to? Is that what, like, does, does it have a name? No, you know, it's like the world, world, like this one, you know, MGGF Awards. Okay. Because it's the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation. Okay, and okay. It happens in every June. And the thing is, uh, you ask about like the sport, we have 10 weight divisions, you know? Mm -hmm. Like featherweight, medium weight, medium half, half. Uh, I am ultra heavyweight because it's over 220. Uh -huh. And the 10th division is the open class, you know? The open class means all the weights together. So you can fight with like the champion of their heavyweight, oh, okay. the champion of, you know? Right. And I won like four times the open class. Okay. Know? That's something that nobody ever done in the history of the sport. The other guy, the, the one that who has ten titles, Roger Gracie, he won three times the open open weight division. And this year, I made something like unique, you know, because I won for the first time, the first one in the history to won the fourth time, you know. The, right. So that's why it was kind of being like a big deal, you know, because that's like the hardest division hardest okay because everybody together you know the, right you can fight the champion of the super half the ultra half you know you can fight all the champions and so it's a pretty it's hard a, yeah it's a pretty big deal um yeah. what is it like like training wise take me through so you're getting prepared for the world championships and you you're gonna go wrestle in this tournament um you're gonna go fight in this tournament. What is the train like? When do you start? And you said it was in June. So when do you start? And what's the daily regime consist of? Uh, normally, uh, jiu-jitsu players they never stop, you know, because it's something that you like. It's your hobby too, right. besides of the competition. So you always train. But when you train to compete, like thinking about the wars, I start kind of like February, March, you know. Mm -hmm start training so it's like February, March, April and kind of like four months you know to the competition. Okay. Because we have one big one too in April so that's why you kind of start early. So the, the I one get you. is kind of like to get make you get ready even more to the... Just this time was really different this year especially because in last words 2015 Mm -hmm. uh, I could win the fourth title, so it was like a lot of pressure on me. And in the second fight, I blow up my knee, had a, had tore three ligaments of my left knee. Right. And I had to do a surgery. Mm -hmm. And it took me like seven months to put the knee again, you know. So right. I had just three months to train for this tournament specifically, you know. So the doctor told me not to compete, but... Right, but what work. does he know? He's only a doctor, right? Yeah, I mean, because like... That's what I think. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, 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 my knee wasn't 100% yet, but right. you change, I, I have to change my game, I have to change my mind, so I changed a lot, and, and at the end of the day, it made me a better like fighter, you know? Isn't, that, isn't it interesting that, that injuries oftentimes, I mean, I always said, in, you know, in my own career or in athletics in general, is normally by the time you get smart enough to understand that you have to make changes. It's the injuries and, and just the wear and tear and the repetitive nature of the sport that beats you down to where now all of a sudden I have to make changes. And you're like, God, I wish I'd have made these changes when I was a young guy, right? I wish, because when you're feeling good, you're like, ah, everything is great. I don't need to really study. How much, like how much, because this is fascinating to me. So I have a son who plays professional baseball and not a lot of film study. I played professional football, and all you do is watch film. Like the practicing part of it, and the preparation from the from just being out there playing football is very small compared to 
the film study and all the time you spend kind of breaking down opponents. For you guys, how much film study do you do when you're getting ready for a tournament um, and you're getting ready to face uh, some really good opponents? Uh, I personally, I don't like, you know, because mm -hmm. like I don't care what about the guy gonna do. Uh, I'm, I worry about what I gonna do, you know. Right. Of course, like I watch one fight, two fights, because you kind of know what the guy gonna do, you know. Like I rather like know, okay, this guy he plays on top, he plays on bottom, what mm -hmm. kind of guard. That's it, you know. I don't like watch too much because I gonna get confused and I gonna think too much about his game you know not right. about mine so okay my my strategy during this competitions is like to attack because when I'm attacking he's defending so so if I push he got exposed himself and that's how I get the you know the space the hold and get my my game flowing okay now I've got some uh, questions from Twitter here for you so don't be nervous all right, but I'm going to ask these questions not personal, from Twitter. Not too personal. No, I mean these are these are came right off. That people want to know. People want to understand. So, uh, who has inspired you over the course of your career? Uh, I have some athletes, you know, but I think the one that inspired me most was my my father because he was the the one that believed me a lot and you know was he was the the one that motivated me more so at, after the end of the day he was like the one that was inspiring me you know to do this because without his support i wouldn't be here today you know he right. was the one that was about to start college and he you know, like i think he's the only one that said that, no no don't do college go to the sport right so i said all right all right i'm, I'm <laughs> in I'm, need, I'm, in, yeah. I'm gonna need you to fund me but yeah, i'm good with that yeah, um, exactly. How about biggest influence? Is there, other than your father, who's been the biggest influence on your career? Uh, I think my sister, because like she was the one that like pushed me, right? Mm -hmm. And I had like a lot of friends that grew up with me, so we stuck together, and it was kind of like competition in the gym, in the tournament. So the ones that grew up with me, you know, what I mean? right? The, the sport on the mat so every day so we were like even when the guy was like down they were kind of like pushing each other right. kept going and we still doing it so we were like big influence okay here's one for you um it says on halloween do you put on your gold medals and go as mr t <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> no but in, in all seriousness you know it's it's always funny because People always ask you about your know, championships, medals, or Super Bowl rings, or whatever. Do you actually ever wear them? Do you actually take the gold medals you have from World Championships? Do you ever go out and wear one, or be asked to go somewhere and put one on, or do they just get put away? No, yeah, you end up like just, you kind of like frame, you know? Right. Oh, you put in a, you know, your, safe deposit box or whatever no no, no, no not even you know just in your closet yeah your drawers yeah i wasn't really important the title you know no, no, the, the, the metal right uh, i like to frame i would mm -hmm. like to frame i didn't do yet so all right here's another one um that came in on twitter for you how do you do how did you do at the blue belt level the blue belt level was actually when i started to compete i think my first competition was I was 15 years old uh, man blue belt was up you know mm -hmm. I, I remember I fought like 10 tournaments the first 10 tournaments I lost in the very first round so I didn't know what was have you run crazy you know right the referee for a long time because I used to compete like my division in the open weight right so I lost twice every tournament so <laughs> it's pretty bad but I remember after I won the first one, was at the end of uh, 2015, was a small tournament just for the the same team, you know, right. like in the gym. And after that, I always placed in every tournament that I, won, you know, that, that I went, you know, like, or winning or getting mad. Right. You know. Well, you know, it fascinates me because we have a society where people fail yeah. 
And, and I always say, you know, failure is not a person, it's an event. And you've got to learn from that event and to, to move forward. Um, but so many people fail and that's it, they quit. They just, they give up and say, well, maybe this isn't for me. What was the inspiration for you in the first 10 tournaments as a blue belt to get whipped and still be going, you know what, I've got this overall overarching goal that I want to achieve. I mean, why did you keep pushing on? What was it? Yeah, like, I was trying, you know, well, I, I felt I was getting better. Mm -hmm. and, but at the tournament, I, I wasn't the same guy that I was in the gym. So I was like hoping one day to get, to get there, put in the tournament everything that I learned like, in practice, you know, uh -huh. to try put there, not be that nervous, you know, not right. get, like gas out in the first minute of the fight. But I remember, like, one tournament, I was winning the fight, I was fighting really good, and I did one mistake, and the guy got one point, and he won, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I remember, it was like, I, I, I cried like in two tournaments when I lost, you know, in my whole right. life, because it's part of the sport, and I'm right. like, oh, I lost, you cry a lot. But I remember I cried like in two tournaments. That I got really sad. And the one in Blue Belt, I was like 16 or 17 at the time. No, 16. I lost and like I thought I was gonna quit. You know, like, oh, I'm done. And I remember my professor at the time, he came to me and he said I did the right word, you know. He, said, he told me like, you can be the weak one and give up now, or you can come back, show up Monday in the gym and train hard. That kind of like, uh, I don't want to be the weak one, you know, I don't want to be the one that give up. Right. So he kind of like, I think he told me the right words in the right moment mm -hmm. and made push me to go come back. And after that, I won the next tournament, you know. So I think that was something really like remarkable in my career. Right. One of the things that always fascinates me with people who have achieved a lot, and you've obviously eight world championships, you've achieved a boatload in your sport but what keeps driving what keeps pushing what is it about you that keeps you driving towards another world championship why why are you not satisfied at this point yeah it's it's a really hard question you know because i i ask that myself too sometimes uh but i remember like last year i was kind of like not that motivated i mean not that's not an excuse because i lost mm -hmm. but i wasn't that motivated for the words specific i was thinking more about the other tournament that's a dcc is a completely different tournament i was thinking like about that tournament because there is one the world the open class of the dcc that's the only thing only title in my career that i don't have yet you know mm -hmm. and i was kind of like really uh, motivated to fight that one, but I kind of like wasn't that work for the world, you know. I had a lot of titles, but kind of like I don't know, just weird to say. Then I got hurt, then I blew up my knee, then I had to stay like one year out without competing anything. Mm -hmm. I think that was like good because that bring me back all the hunger, you know, the the, the will to compete again right. to win. I felt like now, like I was in 2012, you know, when I was hungry without any like world titles, like right. Red to kill. So that I, the injury like made me like reborn, you know, in the sport. So now I I don't I don't think about title, you know. What I mean, like ah, I want to break somebody's record. I want to like record. I want to like be like the best. No, I just I just want to be a better like better you know get better like try to do less mistakes in the like tournament you know don't get like, any points win like don't do nothing do like the perfect competition you know what i mean so i it's not about like professional anymore like it's about more personal you know what i mean right i want to make like i want to be a better athlete better how is your health right now you talked about the knee how are you healthy right now yeah, I just fought the world, it was in June, and last Saturday I fought like a GP at the UFC Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the IBJF GP and they paid like the, the biggest prize money for the sport and was just like invite paid athletes invited mm -hmm. and they, I got invited and I won too so three days ago okay days ago, so, so the reason I asked you that is because I don't want you, any excuses when we get out here and roll and I whip your ass oh, okay I don't want an excuse you got me no excuses when we come back we're gonna roll on the mat